start a series. I'm going to try my best, I can't promise, to go on every single night around this time, 7.30, for about 10 minutes and just share with you guys a little bit about Young Living, go over some of the, the oils, a little bit about the history of Young Living and about what makes essential oils so amazing. So I'm going to start now with just kind of sharing with you a little bit of a prelim and I'll get into the oils throughout the week. And I'll share with you each oil and different ways of using them and why they're so good and why Young Living stands apart from everybody else. So, hey, Joanne, good to see you. So tonight I'm just going to do a little bit of just kind of an overview. And then throughout the week, every night I'll come on and I'll do a 10-minute blip on an oil and a little bit about it. All right. So for those of you who are watching me who do not know who I am, my name is Kathy Dirineri and I am a silver leader with Young Living Essential Oils. And so I'm excited to share with you my knowledge and how amazing this company is. But first of all, the first question most people ask is what are essential oils? Well, simply put, they are the, the concentrated, the aromatic liquids, they're found in the shrubs, flowers, trees, bushes, and seeds, right? They're the plant's immune system. It defends the plants against insects, the environment, um, environmental conditions and diseases. I mean, think about the plants uh, that survive, trees that stand tall when there's the coldest of win winter, the harshest of seasons, and they still stand strong. Or a rose petal that grows in the middle of the snow, right? They survive, they're survivors, and they're survivors because of the liquids, these aromatic liquids found within the plant. Most essential oils are extracted from plant sources used using a steam distillation and are highly concentrated, making them far more potent than a dry botanical. So if you're someone like that drinks tea that has like different like chamomile or lavender teas that are dry, these are way more potent than that. Or if you use any kind of dry flowers throughout the house or use them in that capacity, maybe like you sage, um, just know the oils are more concentrated and far more uh, potent, okay? Essential oils are volatile, right? Volatile, which means the scent of the oil rises quickly in the air. Interesting. That's why when you open up um, a bottle of essential oil, you can really smell it. Case in point, I was on the train today and I put some deep relief on my neck because it was really, you know, tight. And the young lady sitting next to me said, what do you, oh my God, what is that smell? You smell amazing. I said, oh, thank you, it's deep relief. It's actually good for muscular discomfort. And she, she took my business card. She was interested in knowing more. So yeah, the smell is unreal. Hi, Joe, hi everybody. Um, I'm gonna make this quick, I have like five minutes left. So are these oils like canola oil? No, they're not fatty oils. Essential oils absorb through the skin and they evaporate off the skin in a couple of hours. Um, usually on a healthy person, the, the oils will last a good six hours. Um, if you're not feeling so well, the oils may last a little longer on you because they're helping your immune system get into balance. Okay, how long have they been around? How long have these oils been around? Well, they've been around, they've been recorded in history for thousands of years. So guys, everybody's like, oh, she's into those oils. She's some kind of whack job. Oh my God, she's into the snake oils. Oh my God, she's being, you know, fooled, you know, all this stuff. No, no, it works. It's been working from our family. It's been working forever. It's been working for thousands of years, okay? It's pictured in hieroglyphics in Egypt and also Native American teachings. I want you to picture this, guys, when you're listening to me. Egypt and Native America are very, very, very far away from each other, right? They're like super ridiculously far away from each other. However, in the same time period, they both had hieroglyphics using essential oils, okay? How did they talk? They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have the computer. They didn't have planes, trains, or automobiles. They only had stones. So how did they know that the plants would work? How did they know? Two different parts of the world doing the same exact thing. Nature versus nurture, what is it? How do they know? Instinctual, how is it? But they knew that the plants would help them. Okay, so mentioned in the Bible, I think it's mentioned in the Bible uh, 400 times, but way more than that. I think in scripture, it's like 1100 times. Played a big role in everyday life, used for anointing and healing the sick, also used for fragrance. 
Essential oils is nothing new. They've been around throughout history uh, to support health. Uh, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Europeans, the Chinese have used them for centuries for health, for beauty, for fragrance, for spiritual practice. I use frankincense just to pray and get grounded. There are many that uh, reference there are many references to the oils in historical texts, which uh, signifies the importance that it was in history. For example, King Tut's tomb, right? The oil, when they opened it up, was still viable. Cleopatra, the medicine in her, uh, in her cosmetics. Uh, Jesus, frankincense and myrrh. The Greeks, therapeutic massages. Romans, personal hygiene and promotes health. Guys, the oils have been around for quite some time. Do they go bad? No, they don't go bad. Real essential oils do not go bad, um, with the except, exception of citrus oils, okay? So I always tell people, what's in your medicine cabinet? What do you have in your medicine cabinet this winter to help you combat all the things that are going to be coming along with the winter, right? We all start getting that scratchiness, the runniness, the eyes, the chest, right? So what do we do? We go to Dwayne Reed and we start buying all these over-the-counter things to help us combat all this stuff. And what is all that stuff doing to you? What is it actually doing to your body? What is it doing to your health, your body system? It's probably not a really good thing, right? However, what if, what if, your medicine cabinet was filled with things like thieves essential oil, which is clove, cinnamon, lemon, okay? How about if it was filled with like lemon and eucalyptus and maybe some, um, let's see, I'm trying to think what would be really, really good. Maybe some, um, let's see, what do we want to put in there? We want to put in some cypress would be really good in there. Or well, some spruce oils would be really good in there. How about if we did that? What if we did that instead? So, and we use them before, before we started to get the sniffles and the, and the congestion and the head stuff. What if we started using them before? Do you think that the stuff would happen? Maybe we wouldn't be having all that other stuff. So just so you know, kind of something that's been going on for me the last three years is I stopped getting a flu shot because I've been doing good and I was really sick really sick three years ago, like really bad. But I'm not saying these are cures, they're not, they're not medicine. What I'm saying is you take this, you use these to boost your immune system, to keep your body healthy, you keep your body strong, keep your body, fights against the, the things that may come at you that's all around us, that's all I'm saying. So what's in your medicine cabinet, all right? Where do they come from? I'm going over a little bit. Where do they come from? They come from all over the world. Depends where the plant is from, right? So Young Living doesn't plant frankincense in Utah because it wouldn't have the right climate for it. Frankincense grows in Israel because they have the right climate for it. The same thing with tea tree. It grows in Australia because that's where the right climate is. It, lavender, we have the biggest lavender farm in France because that's where the right climate is. The same thing with frankincense and myrrh in the Middle East. Uh, Copaiba, Ocatea, Palo Santo, Dradazu. Where do you get these? You're going to get those at the Amazon rainforest. Young Living owns every single. Hey, Carla. Young Living owns every single farm, right? They own it. They oversee it. If they have, if they vendor it, they oversee it that they are 100%. So what you're getting is 100% therapeutic great essential oils. There are no chemicals. There are no extenders. The seed to seal process means that the seeds are organic. There is nothing on there. There's no pesticides. There's nothing. When you get a bottle of essential oil in your house, you're getting the real thing. That's why hospitals like Beth Israel use it, um, Sloan Kettering use it, they use it to diffuse, to make the patients feel better, feel calmer, feel more relaxed. Um, and there's way more reasons to use these oils. Okay, how are they used? Aromatherapy, massage therapy, personal care, household solutions, nutritional supplements, and over 75 hospitals use it. Okay. That's it for tonight. I am done. I have another meeting to do. I'm going to cut it here. If you are liking this series and you want to learn more about Young Living and how amazing it is, join me tomorrow night around 7.30ish, 7, 7.30, and I'm going to go into how to use the essential oils, three special ways of using them, and how they can help your body feel better, stronger, and you can have a great, awesome winter, and maybe summer, spring, and fall. All right, guys, I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow, and thank you for joining me in my series. Bye-bye.